My name is Martha Owen, and I'm the Heritage Collection Manager at the Evelyn Lehman Culp Heritage Collection at the Napanee Center. This program is about Emma Strzok, the painter. We'll be exploring Emma's life before and during the canvas, her legacy, what she used to learn how to paint, and we'll also explore other folk and naive artists similar to Emma and her style. Before I start, I need to say a special thank you to Emma's niece, Alita Schrock, for answering a lot of my Emma questions, Brian Byrne from the Midwest Museum of American Art in Elkhart for sharing videos from the programs that they had done on Emma, and a huge thank you to Dr. Simon Bronner from the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee for providing me with the materials from his experiences with Emma in the 1970s and 80s and for answering many of my questions. We see this quote a lot from Emma. Um, I live what I paint and I paint what I see. I've also seen it as we live what I paint and I paint what I see. And um, Emma Schrock has become an iconic figure for representing a similar way of living. Miss Emma was born on September 3rd, 1924 in rural Wakarusa and died on May 21st, 1991. Her parents were Roscoe and Susan Schrock, and she was the oldest of five. She had three brothers and a younger sister. Um, her brothers were Norman, Raymond, and Henry, and her sister was Miriam. They were of old order Mennonite faith. And Emma lived much of her life between Wakarusa and Napanee. Emma was small in stature and suffered from a mental condition that left her in a wheelchair much of her life. And following many surgeries, she was able to walk with crutches or a cane. Her sister Miriam had similar problems as Emma. Emma had a small and light room in the front of the Schrock home that would eventually serve as both her studio and sleeping room as she chose to live an active life, adapting her lifestyle whenever needed. So before the canvas, she started painting in 1946 when she was about 22, but she was decorating jars and other items. Those included plates, matchbox wall holders, toothpick holders, salt boxes, vases, coal scuttles, and clear glass piggy banks that she gave to the new newborns in her church community. She would have purchased her plates from the Napanee Dime, or from the, she would have actually purchased her plates from the Wakarusa Dime Store, and many out-of-state Old Order Mennonites would purchase souvenirs from Emma and also her sister Miriam, who made decorative felt refrigerator magnets. So we call Emma the Grandma Moses of, Nap of Northern Indiana. She started painting on canvas around the age of 40 because in 1961, her sister-in-law, Irene Schrock, gave her a book about painting. With Irene's encouragement, Emma experimented with the book's techniques, and that was the beginning of her artistic adventures. Emma once said, I, could, I wish I could sing, but I could only draw. I never took lessons. She loved to paint landscapes and painted scenes directly out of her experiences. Emma preferred to paint mountain cabins, nature, and water, but those didn't sell as well as the ones from her experiences. Emma received an incentive for painting scenes because she was dissatisfied with the representations of her community's lifestyle by outsiders. She said that they couldn't get anything right and that the buggies were just all wrong. She would take an idea and paint many of the same concepts. She had a stock list of common scenes that she would paint with variations and selected activities in a genre style. She painted based on imagination and memory. Sometimes for specific orders, she would have a photograph to paint from, but at times if they were for like old order Mennonites or um, she just didn't have a picture of her uh, what she was painting, she was required to travel to paint her subject matter. Figures didn't have distinct facial features. 
Emma said, I can't paint anyone to look like anyone. I'm just not good on people. I couldn't paint a portrait even if I wanted to. She put people and activities in her farmscapes and other paintings where figures were secondary. It helps, she said that it helped to sell them and that you wouldn't want buildings without buggies or people. Emma once said that painting gets on your nerves. You just get tired all over. I like it, but I just know, I just don't know what's next, what to make next. After painting pictures for about two weeks, I change off, take a break, and do easier painting, the wooden wares, for a while. Once a year, I get a streak to do something different. Emma's paintings contain personal symbols, her love of nature and water, and of course, her favorite color, which was pink. Buggies, windmills, plain clothing, white horses, and green blinds and windows were symbols of Mennonite identity. Skippy the dog was something that Emma put in a lot of her paintings and would ask her family where she could fit him in at. In the Grant collection, Skippy the dog makes 11 appearances in paintings. He is a white dog with black spots. She aimed to paint one picture a day, resulting in over 2,000 paintings. She found that big paintings were taking too much time, so she went to painting smaller ones for a quicker turnaround. Emma's first attempt to sell outside of the home was in 1965 at the Pletcher uh, Village Arts Festival, which later became the Amish Shakers Arts and Crafts Festival. There is where she met Mary Stavanovich and Garth Boot. Mr. Boot taught Emma how to paint on barnwood siding, and Mary became very good friends with Emma. Mary Stavanovich started using acrylics when they first came out, and Emma came over to her paintings one time and poked them, asking why Mary's paintings were already dry and Emma's weren't. Emma was using oil paints at the time. So Mary introduced Emma to acrylic paints, and that became Emma's go-to art supply. She signed most of her paintings, Emma Schrock, with a date, and she had signed paintings for her nieces and nephews as Aunt Emma, and there's a little bit of speculation that she might have also signed some of her paintings that way for a short period of time. She also only signed her name and gave titles to her work for non-Mennonites. For Mennonites, it usually was not necessary since they knew who she was. One of Emma's nephews made the frames for Emma's paintings and made some of them with the siding of, from the old county line church. That church had been on Ash Road and the frames that were not made by her nephew had been purchased by Emma herself. We do know that she would have purchased a lot of her art supplies from the mail order art supply company called Dick Blick Art Supplies. And in 1984, there were note cards made of Emma's paintings without her permission, and she was so mad that she tried to buy them all up. After that, she had her own note cards made and started selling them. Emma painted daily, except on Sundays, and kept a rigorous schedule. Emma's ability to portray the life around her is based on her intimate familiarity with her physical and cultural surroundings. It was made evident when someone asked Emma to paint a picture of their house, and the house did not conform to the typical house that she was used to painting. She had some difficulties with it. She called it a funny house because it was different than what she was used to. She ha had a very uneasy time depicting life outside of her community and ethnic experience. Before Emma started going to art shows, people would come to the Schrock home to see Emma's work and to purchase it. In 1978, the former Mathers Museum of World Culture had an exhibit of her work called Emma Schrock, Mennonite Artist of Mennonite Life, and that was Emma's first museum exhibit where she was featured in it. In 1979, Emma had her first solo exhibit at the Art Museum, or, I'm sorry, in 1979, Emma had her first solo exhibit in an art museum at the Midwest Museum of American Art in Elkhart, Indiana. All of the paintings from that expedition were purchased by the attendees. Also, in 
uh, late 18, 1988 to early 1989, the Mathers Museum had an exhibit called We Live What I Paint, Indiana Amish by Emma Schrock. Her early work from 1964 to 1980 is the most authentically naive and is in the same vein as Grandma Moses. These paintings are the most sought out by collectors. So Emma and Grandma Moses, as you can see, there's some very much some similarities between Emma and Grandma Moses. Grandma Moses would emit telephone wires and cars in her paintings, and Emma would also. Emma's buggies would be placed so that they were going down the center of the road and not the side of the road, and they both liked to paint white houses and liked landscapes. So that book that Emma received from her sister-in-law, Irene, was that of Connie Gordon. Uh, Connie Gordon once said, my passion has not been what I can do for myself, but what I can do for others. According to the book, Genesis, Guinness Book of World Records, Connie Gordon is the most prolific art teacher in the world. During World War II, while in the United States Marine Special Services, she taught over 5,000 Marines how to draw. She created the patented four-step method called TILS. Think it, ink it, link it, sink it. And that anyone could create a picture in minutes. She helped over 27 million people through art in 80 countries. Connie authored 41 art instructional books and sold over 15 million copies. She had a long-running television show in Miami and was featured on numerous national and international programs for over 60 years. Her students included former presidents, CEOs, and celebrities, including Johnny Carson, David Letterman, Jack Parr, and Steve Allen. This was the book that uh, Emma would have been given by her sister-in-law, that you can paint a picture you can paint a picture in full color oils in minutes. This is the inside of the book, um, and it shows you really how to take things one step at a time. Here is a fall one. And then here is a painting that Emma created in 1965 that we like to think she possibly used the Con Gordon method on. So we're going to talk about some notable Emma paintings in the Gr Doug Grant collection here at the Napney Center and in the Evelyn Lehman Culp Heritage Collection. So Happy Holidays is a unique one because it is actually painted on Reeves and Archer paper. Uh, this gets away from where Emma painted on a lot of canvases. Uh, this one is actually painted on paper. This is the only one of Emma's paintings that uh, we know of that has a greenhouse instead of a white house. This is from when she visited Lancaster, Pennsylvania with her fa father Roscoe and other church members on a bus tour. They had given Emma a sketchbook to record her memories for future paintings. And it was also said that it was a cousin's house and that Emma actually visited this house in early summer, but she decided to paint uh, the house in a winter scene. Uh, this one, Chore Time, is also painted on Reeves and Arches paper. The storyline of this painting is centered on a Saturday that the parents went visiting, leaving the oldest son in charge. The children, instead of doing chores, are enjoying catching fireflies in the meadow while well, the oldest is bringing the cows in from the pasture for milking. But surprise, mom and dad actually came home early. Um, and you, you could see, if you look at the horse and buggy, it actually has two horses on it. Um, and that meant that they had been traveling. So uh, Desert Beauty is actually uh, one of our smaller paintings. And you can see uh, Skippy the dog is actually in this painting. I think he was in the last one also. Uh, Emma 
was at a quilting bee and became restless with her slow progress and was distracted by some deserted barns across the road. So she turned around, started sketching so she could remember the beautiful scene when she returned home. In her painting, she later added a buggy with a young couple and a bundled up baby. Um, the interesting thing about the buggy is that uh, it signifies that they're still newlyweds because they're driving an open courting buggy. Uh, like a long time ago is really interesting because this painting could have been a fond memory from Emma's childhood. If you look at the tiny inscription in the left corner, it has 47 years question mark. Um, this is where a lot of people are thinking that she's depicting a scene from when she was 12 years old. And it is very unsure if Emma is one of the children or if she has been observing this from a window. Uh, Emma's observation on life and recording of memories is really expressed with this painting. A stormy su Sunday evening. Um, if you stare at this painting long enough, you can actually feel the wind whipping around on a cold winter's day. You can also imagine the Schrock family traveling home uh, in this storm that they're getting there safely thanks to their trusty horse tricks. Uh, this one is called the farmstead. This is what we call the farmstead. It does have Emma's signature in the corner, but it is not titled. Um, Emma only know or Emma's family only knows of two possible paintings with her house painted in them. Uh, farm the farmstead being one of them, and another one is owned by a private collector. So if there are more out there, you could really say that her qu house is quite a rare, fi uh, rare find. Um, this is an example of her painting similar scenes, um, just from different angles. So this is what we call, we call all of these the auction or the auction sale. Um, we've heard a couple different stories about this, although if you study the paintings, you'll see similarities in them um, with the house, with the pink flowers, um, the quilt, there's the quilter in a couple of them. Um, if you look the nature, separ the natural separation of men and women and the women looking at themselves in the mirror while no one was aware uh, is showing secret pride. So if you look closely in a couple of these, you can actually see the women looking in the mirrors, and there's no one else around them. Um, and if you also look closely on one of the tops of the giant haystack, you'll find a little girl in pink. Uh, so this is The Last Journey. Uh, the only thing that Emma said about this painting was that she would never paint another funeral. Oops. So this this painting, um, there aren't very many Emma Shocks still alive. So this would have been something that was probably been purchased by an old order Mennonite might have purchased. Um, Emma liked to paint oil lamps because all they do is shine. Uh, sugar camps is something that Emma was known to paint a lot of. Uh, she could uh, alter the paintings that she considered flops and turn them into sugar camp scenes by inserting a large sugaring house in the center of the canvas and then adding uh, other items depending on the size of the canvas. This one is called Thrashing Day. Uh, the, the tractor would have had steel wheels on it since Old Order Mennonites do not have rubbers on the tires of their farm equipment. And when Emma was interviewed about this painting, she quirked that it was so young folks wouldn't take the tractor to town to drive around on a Saturday night. Um, we call this one the triptych at 
at first glance, you would think that these paintings were three separate paintings and not a trio. Um, but it is said that this was Emma's view from her bedroom window. Uh, one of the favorite things of the triptych of mine is that they actually, you can't really tell it in the photographs, uh, but it actually has pink glitter paint for the flowers. So until I started really doing a deep dive into Emma's life and finding out that she loved nature and mountain cabins, I never truly understood cabin fever. Um, but as I started looking at it, I saw, you know, the mountain spring, there's the cabin, and then there's also the mountain in the background. So this painting, she would think wouldn't sell because it didn't depict her life very properly. Uh, this one is called A Bright New Day. Uh, this one is rather interesting also because the person who purchased this painting actually took it back to Emma and asked her to paint in more people because they felt it didn't have enough. Emma obliged and painted in the two standing on the creek bank. So these are some examples of Emma's paintings on wood and um, how crisp and nice she got them um, and just how beautiful. These are actually two uh, very small pieces that we've blown up for this. Sleeping at Grandma's. Um, this is thought to be Emma's last painting. This would have been a painting of her mother's room, Su Susie Schrock. Uh, it, if finished, it would have showed how the bedroom would have been made up to welcome many grandchildren for a sleepover. This unfinished piece, though, shows Emma's technique, how she would roughly sketch out the images and then often painted by color to be frugal with her paints. Um, it is very interesting that she dated, titled, and signed this unfinished piece. So, Old Order Mennonite. Emma once said, I am faithful Old Order Mennonite. The faith I have means everything to me. The Old Order Mennonites are from the Mennonite groups of Swiss, German, and South German heritage who practice a lifestyle with some certain, without some elements of modern technology. In 1872, the church split when nearly 100 Whistler Mennonites left the Yellow Creek Mennonite Church over the use of English in worship. In 1907, another 120 families spit, split and became the Martin Old Order Mennonites. The Schrock family belonged to the Martin Old Order Mennonites. Amish and Old Order Mennonites look similar to the outside eye, but they both drive horses and buggies um, and practice non-resistance non to evil. The women wear coverings and the men wear hats. Uh, the Amish wor worship in their homes while the Old Orders worship in a church. Um, Amish, Amish farm with draft horses and the Old Orders use steel wheel tractors. Without rubber, it would prevent the temptation to use tractors for the purposes other than farming. Uh, churches of the Old Order Mennonites have men and boys entering through one door and women and girls through another. Uh, the men and women also do not sit together. So Emma's popularity and legacy. Emma had no desire for fame or popularity. Um, in Dr. Bronner's articles about Emma, and he also included her in a book that he wrote, um, he actually changed her name upon her request. Uh, so it is very interesting that we were able to connect with Dr. Bronner uh, about his work and correspondence with Emma. There was never a sign outside the Schrock home that advertised Emma's work for sale, and she never advertised elsewhere. She quietly sold her paintings and galleries in Goshen, Napanee, and Shipshawana. Uh, her work and paintings was a public show of labor. labor. Emma estimated in 1984 that she had sold thousands of hand-decorated household articles to tourists. Emma's family never truly understood what she meant to people um, that she sold paintings to until after her death. One lady came 
to the museum from Iowa to see our exhibit. And she owns Emma Shock paintings herself and says that she also loves Grandma Moses. But Emma's paintings are cheaper to collect and own. So Emma is a part of an exclusive group of folk artists, naive artists. Naive painters um, tend to begin painting later in life without formal training. Um, Henry Rousseau started full-time painting at age 49, Emma at age 40, Maude Lewis at age 35, and Grandma Moses at age 78. Naive and folk art reflect four things. Uh, brighter, a brighter side of life, easily recognizable scenes, depictions of everyday events in the countryside, and celebrations of various festivals. They also have life in primary colors, a childlike perspective, and an individualistic scale. Um, a naive painting is described as giving you a feeling of feeling removed from reality in a young free and lightweight sort of way. So first we have Henry Rousseau, which he was alive from 1844 to 1910. Paolo Picasso in 1885 first applied the term naive to Henry. Henry was self-taught. He, he was considered also to be considered a post-impressionist. He was from France and was originally a toll and tax collector. He started painting in his early 40s, but then went to painting full-time at age 49. And this is one of uh, popular uh, paintings of Henry Rousseau from 1891. Next, we have Grandma Moses. She lived from 1860 to 1961. Her real name was Anna Mary Moses, and she began painting at age 78 and was from New York. She had started out as a housekeeper at the age of 12, and she worked at that for 15 years. At the age of 76, she developed arthritis and could no longer embroider or do hobby art. Her sister suggested painting. When her right hand would grow tired, she would actually switch to her left. In 30 years, she painted 1,500 paintings, and they first sold for 3 to $5.00. She used the New England landscapes and would omit modern life items like tractors and telephone poles. And so here's a painting of, from Grandma Moses. Next, we have Maud Lewis. Maud lived from 1903 to 1970. Uh, it is said that Maud Lewis has fit, uh, similar features to Emma. She is from Canada, and she started by uh, selling painted Christmas cards at the age of 35. She is from Nova Scotia in Canada, so she painted landscapes of Nova Scotia. They're cheerful paintings of landscapes, animals, and flowers, and they began to sell paintings for 2 to $3 and went as high as 7 to $10. She had arthritis, and that limited to how fast she could fill the demand for her paintings, and one of her paintings was actually made into a postage stamp. So here is a Maude Lewis painting of Nova, from Nova Scotia. Um, next we have Will Moses, who he was born in 1956, and he is Grandma Moses's great-grandson. He actually, though, has something in common with Emma. In 1984, Emma and Will had their paintings exhibited together in a gallery in Goshen, Indiana. He started painting at the age of four years old and started professionally painting when he turned 19. He did not set out to copy his great-grandmother's work, but rather became a folk artist to carry out the family tradition, and Grandma Moses's father, Russell King Robertson, was a painting as well as a brother, Fred, and a um, her son, Forrest. It's a tradition that goes beyond just his great-grandma, who became a legend. He actually does live on the same farm as Grandma Moses, so a lot of his paintings are from the same landscape. So here's a painting of Will's. So 
So the Doug Grant Family Gallery here at the Napanee Center and in the Evelyn Lee McCall Heritage Collection. In 2018, the Napanee Public Library was approached to acquire Doug Grant's personal collection of Emma Shock paintings. In 2020, they started the process to renovate both the museum and gallery space. Mr. Grant and the Fetzer Institute gave donations to help with the renovation of the gallery space and to also bring it life, to life a new cartoon exhibit. In 2021, all the work was finished and was, it was able to officially open the gallery in July. So the next time you stare, stare at an Emma Schrock painting, I hope you think of her and notice the little details. I know that I did. Through researching for this program, reading books and articles about her and asking my many questions, I cannot help but notice those little details in her paintings. I also now stare at the figures that she painted in her paintings and can't help but look at those pink, those little girls in pink and imagine that it's Emma herself. Thank you for listening.